Hey, how y'all doing? I know y'all haven't seen me a while. Uh, I'm going to talk about today, and this is going to be an exciting series, the laws of long life. The laws of long life. There are laws in the earth, in God's kingdom, that will allow you to live long. And I really feel I'm going to have, I wrote some notes, but I really feel the Holy Ghost is going to expound even more through me. I believe that I have people in my family that follow that example of a person living a long life. I believe myself when I made changes in my life concerning the sins that I did that led to death. And when I made changes according to scripture that God did what he did with Hezekiah, he prolonged his life 15 years. Well, I'm hoping mine is more than 15 years. Um, I'm 63, but sometimes when I get out there and I work, I feel like a young buck, like I'm 21 years old. Like I still got energy in me. I still work out. I still run. I still walk on the treadmill. I still do the bicycle thing. I still do the lifting of weights. I try to take my vitamins. I try to eat healthy, even though sometimes I have a sweet tooth. I ain't got much left up in here, though. Just a few left. But in that, God has blessed me to see 63 years when there were fam people in my family that have died in their 50s and their 40s. I'm not saying that some of them died because of health problems. No, some of them died heart attack or they may have had a problem with their heart their whole childhood coming up, but they remain healthy. I have an 88 year old mother that's still in good shape. Um, with mom, she's still in her right mind. She's not seen now. She didn't lose it. And she's on top of everything. She's the pillar of our family, Claudia Johnson. She might have a little problem with her knees, a little back problem, but that's age. But I'm talking about like diabetes, something that's going to kill you, cancer, high blood pressure. She ain't got none of that. So the laws of long life plays a role in this. Um, how a person lived their life and what they did in their life. Or did they make changes in their life so they can live long? Were they paying attention to the signs that were going to take them out of here? Or they knew this since they were young and, and they were brought up eating healthy, um, doing things that were healthy. Okay? The character and a lot of times the things that you do in your character and your mindset, there are laws there that could be leading to death. But if you make some changes, you can live a long life. I have a spiritual grandmother in Coosahatchee, South Carolina, small town in Jasper County, South Carolina. Her name is Beatrice Graham. We call her Mother Graham or Mother B. Mother B today, well, she, last month, she turned 105 years old, 105. And I had the opportunity of growing up with her in the church. And she was that type of mother, she didn't play, but she loved you unconditionally, no matter what. But if she sees something not right, she's going to come here, boy. And she'll pull you to the side. Mother Graham didn't play. She would tell you. And a lot of times, it'd be the Spirit of the Lord speaking to her to tell you to get right. 
And I've seen her warn people. And the head was hard and it led to their death. Not that she's a mother of doom. No, she's none of that. She's a loving mother. She cares. And when God revealed to her things, she would tell you what does save the Lord, man. You better listen. When you got people like that, wise mothers around you that live to 105, not many live that long. The Bible says we can live up to 120 years. I wouldn't be surprised if my biological mom, Claudia Johnson, was to live up to that age. Because she still look good for her age. Mother Graham don't even look 105. You you go to my Facebook page. You'll see both pictures of both of them. They look pretty young for their age. But how did they get to that point? How do I live a long life? How do I get my life together? All right. Let's start off with Proverbs chapter 3. Okay. Let's start off with Proverbs chapter 3. I'm going to put my hat on my head. And this is what we're going to talk about. The law, laws of long life. The laws of long life. I'm going to read it from the good news. But before I begin, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, let this not be me. But let this be your spirit, says the Lord, that operates through me. You, Holy Spirit, you take total control of my tongue. You take total control of my heart. You take total control of my mind. And when I speak to the masses today, let me bring clarity. Let me bring understanding. Not only based on my experience, but what I've seen on experiences of others. And Lord God, you speak to me, let your oracles, that you and everything would be glorified. Let my speech be with grace, seasoned with salt, that I should speak a word to the masses. Father God, you said with all prayer and supplication, you said that you'll speak to me, Lord God. And when I speak as a pastor or speak as a leader, according to Jeremiah 3, 15, that I would bring knowledge and understanding to the masses. And Father God, that I would teach them not to fear and help them get their lives together. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy for it to do it through all generation and father god we thank you in jesus name i had to turn the computer off and may the church and the congregation and facebook say amen proverbs chapter three look at verse one it says son or daughter do not forget what i teach you Listen to this. Always remember what I tell you to do. Now, this is Solomon talking to his son. And this is advice also for younger men, but this is also advice for everybody. Don't, don't, be, don't stop your ears that you can't listen to wisdom coming from a man of my stature, my age, because I done been there, done that. I done lived in the streets. So when you talk about gang banging and all that foolishness, been there, done that. You understand what I'm saying? Been past that. So advice, when a person comes with wisdom and insight and been through something, you need to open up your ears and listen, okay? They're not just saying that, just to be saying it, just to feel good about themselves. They're telling you that to warn you or they're telling you that to save your life because they didn't get old being stupid, okay? And a lot of times that love, they want to extend that love to you because they see you a young buck or a young lady coming up. So they want to give you advice, a little bit of counsel. May not know you from a hill of beans, but the Holy Ghost can speak to some of us old men. 
and some of us old women. We have insight on things. A lot of times the Holy Spirit will drop something in our spirit to tell you, and you know it's you, and you know you're messing up, and you know your hard head needs to listen. We may not know what you're going through. You may be getting ready to go out with a gang bus and blow and blow a bunch of people up, and then the Holy Spirit will drop a dime and say, hey, don't go with that sister today. Don't go with that sister today. I don't know why the Holy Ghost is telling me to tell your heart that this. Don't go out because it may be your last day on earth. So a lot of times when wisdom talks, don't ever forget what an old man and old woman might tell you. They're gonna, we, we're always going to extend wisdom, especially some of you young bucks that think you know everything. Young preachers is coming up. And you haven't really obtained the fullness of the wisdom of God. And there's a lot of things that we haven't obtained, but there's things that we've learned that we can tell you. So don't forget what I teach you. Don't always remember what I tell you to do. Listen to this in verse 2. My teachings will give you a long and prosperous life. Listen to what it's saying. My teaching, it could be the Holy Ghost is through me to tell you something. It will give you a long life. And in that life, you're going to prosper in your health. You're going to prosper with finances and your goals. You're going to achieve your goals. You're going to be prosperous. You're going to be able to give and not borrow no more. It may be a life that, you know, you can't puff yourself up in pride and say, I did it. Because without the Lord, you're nothing. So when you don't acknowledge the Lord, your life could be cut short. But you better remember that the teaching will give you a long and prosperous life. Not just you by yourself. Now listen to this. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Underline it. Never let go of loyalty and faithfulness. Don't get rich and stick your head up. Still be humble. Still be loyal. Still be faithful. Stay the same person that you are. Don't change. These are laws to help you live a long life. It says the loyalty and faithfulness, it says to tie it around your neck and write it on your heart. What is he saying? You've been faithful, Lord, when you didn't have. Now that you have, don't change. Be the same person that you are. Make sure you act that way and it's in your heart and you don't change from that. Don't let money change you like these people that made Hollywood. Don't stick your nose up. Always look back to give back from the environment that you came from. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't get your nose up so high and act like you made it. Long, I'm talking about laws of a long life. It says, time around your neck. Write it on your heart. If you do this, if you do this, if you do this, listen. Both God and man will be pleased with you. And you don't want to know why that's important? Because when you do unto man to do, you know, you help out, you're there for him, you're giving him counsel, you get what you're doing, you esteem, God is esteeming you, and you're showing the love of God to touching other people's lives. You're showing God's love and God's accepting you when you treat them right. I'm talking about laws of a long life. It says to trust in your Lord, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Never rely on what you think and what you know all the time. It's not about you. Why am I going to the extra scripture? Because it's added on. Solomon is still talking. Remember the Lord in everything that you do. No matter if you're going to college, don't forget him. Put him first. If you're taking on a new career, don't forget him. 
put them first. Sometimes we forget. We jump ahead. And we do it without counsel of God. Put them first. Put them in everything that you do. The Bible says, if you commit your ways to the Lord, your ways will be established and it will succeed. Proverbs 16, 3. Write it down. So, in that scripture, Proverbs 3, 1 through 2, number one, if you live a long life, your days are going to be lengthened. You're going to have peace in God. You're going to have favor and good understanding with man and God. That's important. If you don't have good understanding, you're going to miss God. If you're not trying to sit down and understand the people that you're talking to, you're going to miss God. If you don't try to understand what God is doing and how he's putting together a people and he's making you a good understanding to comprehend what that person's going through, if you're not understanding, you miss God. I have a daughter that loves people. My mom's is the same way. And sometimes my me and my wife would get on my daughter because she loves too much. And she gives, 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 gives. And we know that these Negroes and these people are trying to take advantage of her. And I can't stand it. But I'm growing to understand why. She's that way. I'm not saying, I'm not a selfish person, but I hate people that try to take advantage of people. Especially good people. And I got their back. And I wouldn't let nothing happen to my baby, but this is what she wants. My mom's is the same way. Me and my me and my baby sister, Dina, be on my mom's all the time. Mom, these people are taking advantage. They don't care. They, don't, they gotta get themselves up and do something for themselves. Instead of you being there. But if you're good to these people and you have a good understanding, God will give you favor with God and man. I understand. But sometimes it just tears me to pieces to see people do people like that. Do you get what I'm saying? So you people that have good hearts, I got you. But it still drives me crazy when I know that they told you to your face, they're taking advantage of you. And they really don't care. And they're disrespecting you. But I understand. If you do unto them, you're doing unto God. And you're going to get back. I got that. All right? We need to learn from my daughter and my mom's to be a person that stands in mercy. What am I saying by that? Okay, I have a cab business. Just the other day, I had to go from Havelock to New Bern, which is normally $40. But this person was already in New Bern and they had to go from the hotel to the airport, which if I was at the hotel, if I was at the airport going to pick them up, it would normally be $25. So instead of charging them the $40 plus the extra $25, which would have been too much money for the shorter distance that they ran, I took the hit. I extended mercy. And I told him, just give me $25. Another person, I said, just give me $30. It was still shorter and less than what I would normally charge them from coming that long way. That is me showing mercy. And I explained to them, normally I charge this, but I'm going to let this go. Just give me 30 bucks. That's mercy. That's the love of God being extended. I'm not bragging about it. I, I, 
I'm not making this ridiculous amount of money, rich, 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 like you think. But God told me, the Holy Spirit told me to show mercy. Now, there was times when people tried to take advantage, and I did not show mercy. I was just like the one that didn't forgive. God forgave him, but when it came time for him to forgive somebody else did that, he didn't. Do you get what I'm saying? But in this situation, it was somebody trying to take advantage. So I had to turn him off. And the Holy Spirit said, it's okay. Let him go. Okay? Cut him off. But mercy... Is extending and showing love. If the person is being honest about this situation, one time there was an older guy, and um, he had to go from our airport to OAJ, which is the airport Albert Ellis Airport, right outside. It's about 21 miles outside of Jacksonville, but it's about an hour and 20, 25, or 30 minutes from us, close to two hours if it's traffic. So normally I charge. Somewhere like $115, $120. But this man got robbed by another cab service, and they took him to the wrong airport. And normally I would have charged them the 115 I said, no, nah, just give me $95, all right? We good, we good, I understand. That's extending mercy. That's understanding a person in the situation that they're in. Would I live a long life for extending mercy? Yes. Would you live a long life for extending mercy and letting the person get over like a four-leaf clover when they're in a rut like that? Yes. See, God is watching you. So we need to learn to stand in mercy and in truth. And we need to learn to put this in our hearts, according to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. So we live a long life. Our days are lengthened. We live in that peace and alignment with God. We're favored with God and man because why? We extend it and we show the love of God and the mercy of God to our fellow man. Some of you need to read Matthew 25. Read it, study it, and do it. I'm not going to tell you what's in it. Go to Matthew 25. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Laws of a long life. It's vitally important. Let's look at verse 1. We got a generation today. First mom out. They will curse daddy out in a minute. They have no respect for people my age, elders. They don't care. Everything has to be subject to them. And they're being honored in the media. Some were movie stars, film directors, rap artists, R&B artists. And What's happening is they got into the age where they got their money, but they started disrespecting their parents. They never went back and forgave their parents for what they've been through or what they put their parents through. They blame their parents for everything. My daddy molested me. My mother did this. My daddy did that. And maybe that was the best way they knew how to raise you. They didn't know any better way because their parents didn't raise them right. And sometimes they were trying to be the parent and be there in your life and be concerned. But you dishonored them. Some of you, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Your parents was always there for you. And you still disrespected them. Or mama was with a sugar daddy, a drug dealer, or something like that. And that's all you see in all your life is drugs and guns and violence. I got that. I'm from NY. I already know. I'm not just some preacher, the teacher, the, 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 the teacher of the word, and all honest. I haven't been honest all my life because I was in the drug game, all that too, just like you. 
So what I'm trying to tell you is the Bible has laws that will allow you to come out of the dilemma that you're in. And God will extend your days if you do what I'm getting ready to read. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. Look at verse 1. It says here, children or adults, it is your Christian duty to obey and honor your parents. Now, you might be too old to obey them, but you have to honor them. Check this out. For this is the right thing to do. Respect. Listen to this. Your father and your mother. I don't feel like hearing that. Uh, they did me wrong. They left me with nothing and da 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 da. And they're nothing. It says, respect your father and your mother. It is the first commandment that has a promise added. So in verse 3, listen to this. So that all may go well with you and you may live a long time in the land. I'm not going to forget my, I hate. Well, I'm going to share a story with you. My parents, my mother that's alive now, is actually my, my biological aunt. She's actually my biological aunt. My real mother gave me up at birth at Brooklyn Jewish Hospital, which I think is Brooklyn Jewish Medical Center today. And I was given over to my father's baby brother and his wife. So my uncle and my aunt raised me. Now, when I found out later on that my uncle Richard was actually my dad in the family kept it from me. And I know you're looking at me, oh, that happened to you? Yes. I held on to bitterness. I held on to unforgiveness. I was, I felt I was treated like the black sheep. But guess what over the years? I had to learn to forgive. Because if I didn't forgive, those times when I had a gun put to my head, bang, bang, the bullet would have gone off and I would have been in my grave. Those times when I was put in danger and somebody was getting ready to stab me with a knife and God's angel avenged me. You understand what I'm saying? Because I had to learn to live a life of forgiveness and I held things against people in my family that didn't accept me. I was mad. I was angry. Now I'm able to accept them. They hate me or oh well. That was back in the day. I had to grow up out of that. I still love them. I still stand in the gap and in my prayer closet, I have all of them in my mind and I write it down on a prayer list and I pray even for my enemies, them that despitefully use you, used me and persecuted me and hated me. And God moved them out of my way, the ones that tried to destroy my life. But I had to learn to forgive. I couldn't hold this. I had to go to my father's grave, my real dad. And I cursed him at his grave. And I told him how I felt. Did you disown me? You wouldn't even say I was your son. Blah, 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 blah. Then the Holy Ghost turned around and said, you need to forgive him. And right then and there, I started crying. And I let it go. And I forgave him. Did I forget? No, I didn't forget, but I'm talking about if I forget, I've, I only remembered it. So I can come back and minister to you who's hurting from the relationships that you had with your dad and your mom. I had it just as bad. I had an uncle. He looked at me like he looked at his older brother, who was my real dad. I didn't know that until I was 16. 
And after that, I was angry up until the age of 27. I held bitterness. I should have been out of here. But God had a plan. He had a plan for my life. He had to deliver me. And I respect the family. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even though some may look at me as being the Alan Johnson of the past, which I'm not anymore. I've changed. And it took me a while. Because imagine you going through something like that. That's hard for you to forgive. It's hard when you have family members that molested you. And you have to learn to turn around and let it go and forgive them. And then you turned around and you was a child and didn't know no better. So you initiated on another child when you were that child. The same thing that was initiated on you because you didn't know any better. Now, as an adult, I could see me as an adult doing something kind of crazy. Then I, I deserve to be punished. But when I didn't know any better as a kid because it was initiated on me but I had to learn over the years to forget the people that did me that way and I, I went back to the people that I wronged and told them I was sorry for what I did when I was young that I did not know better it's up to them whether they want to forgive me or not but if you do the forgiving if you make the peace, if you initiate what you did wrong and you come to the person in peace, the law says that your life will be extended. But if you hold on, your life can be cut off because you're holding bitter. But it's not fair they did this. But that was a long time ago. But they're still on the drugs. Yes, but you still, as a person, have to go and you're going to have to forgive. And you're going to have to ask God to give you the power to completely release the hurt, the pain, the bitterness, the unforgiveness. I had to go through it. My wife had to go through it with people that hurt her in her life. My sister had to go through it through people that hurt her. And I was one of the people that hurt her. I had to go back and make peace. Do you get what I'm saying? Because I'm going to be held accountable. If I don't, the laws of long life are vitally important. And I have to go here. I have to go here when I talk about this. So you're going to have to go back. Even, to, even if you don't feel like it. And you're going to have to make peace with that parent. Or if they're dead, you're going to have to go to the grave. The dead may not hear what you say. If they made it to glory, they'll probably hear it. If they're dead and died in their sins, they may not hear it. But you did what God told you to do. You went back and you forgave. The Bible says if you don't forgive people with their trespasses, that God is not going to forgive you of your trespasses. That's Mark chapter 11, verse 25, if you want to know. All right? Even in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's in Matthew chapter 6. So you're going to have to abide by what the Word of God says under these laws in order for you to live a long life. I'm pleading with you. If I can overcome it, and it took me years to get past it, and I had to keep going before God's face until he got my heart right. And there's still some things in my heart that he's transforming and changing as I yield myself to God. That's what you have to do. Yield yourself to God. If you know there's issues in there. Do you get what I'm saying? Now, let me read on. Remember, to respect your father and your mother, it is the first commandment that has a promise added to it. What is he talking about? The promise added to it. That it may go well with you and that you may live a long time in the land. That's why I think Mother Graham has lived to 105 because she's always honored her parents. And she's the pillar of her family and people are honored. She's the pillar of our church. Down there, my, my spiritual mom's church. Check this out. Show you something else. 
Number four, parents. Now, we're going to talk to mommy and daddy. Because this law goes the same for the parents that bring their kids up the wrong way. So we're not just talking about the children obeying the parents. We're talking about the parents doing right by the child. These are for you mothers and fathers that think you can use the welfare system and use these children as pawns. Huh? And you're trying to get over like to make money to put in your pocket, but you're not buying clothes for them. You're not supplying them. You're not trying to help. You're thinking about yourself. So parents, do not treat your kids in such a way as to make them angry. So when you're going around showing that drug dealer and you're going around partying and going out neglecting your kids, and you go on, no, you don't pay them no attention. You don't try to spend no quality time with them. Guess what they become? They become angry. Because you're not there for them. You don't care. I'm talking about laws of living a long life. This goes for parents too, not just the kids. So some of you are trying to take shortcuts and you're using these kids as pawns and as they get older and they watch the way you neglect, they watch the way they're treated, they're going to grow angry and they're going to grow to hate you. Mark my word. I know what I'm talking about. There's some parents where the mother has lied to the son or to the daughter about their father. She messed up the relationship in order to get rid of him. And the kids don't know the whole true story. So they're blaming the dad for leaving when the mom may have been the reason why the dad left. Some of you are going through that right now. When dad wasn't in the home. And I'm going to tell you something. 75% of the chance. Why daddy wasn't in the home is because mother ran him off. The other 25%, the men may have been abusive. They may, may have been out of control. But you're thinking, oh, no, 75% the men. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Not nowadays. Back in the days, it was more 75, 25. Now, it's the other way around. Because men are trying to come back and trying to take care of their own. And after these young youngins seeing what their fathers did to them, they're trying to be there for their kids so they can set an example. You'll see more men in the home, young men, trying to be there for their kids now. Trying to work. They don't know how to be a father, but they're trying. They're trying. I was one of them. I was a single dad. I raised Hannah, my daughter, pretty much by myself for years. Yes. And then it was things that was done to me out of spite to see me go down. And I could have held bitterness and unforgiveness. I'm talking about the laws of living a long life. Some of you parents, you, you know you've been using them kids as a pawn. Some of you men, you know you've been using those kids as a pawn, but there are real dads and real moms that really want to be there and they are there for their kids. I'm not saying all of them. Don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about the bad, but I'm talking about the bad and the good. Okay? So the laws of a long life is you stepping up and doing what the word says. But the way things are in America now, that woman don't want to be there for them kids no more. Sometimes you got men, but men are now becoming the woman and taking care of their kids and working. You got a lot of sisters that are still out there doing their thing too. And God is blessing them because of it. Once they find their niche, they find a career goal they want to go, 
and God will allow them in this situation where they will go back to school, get their education, and they will get a job maybe with the state, maybe with the government, and they're raising two or three kids by themselves. They become good single parents, good providers. Some fathers are like that too. And this is why I'm trying to share this, to try to get you out of the rut, the ones that are not doing the right thing, to get them to start doing the right things, or they may not be long living here on earth. There's a lot of you, you got to smoke, you're on your drugs, that's killing you. You don't know what they're putting in that paraphernalia. They don't, you don't know what they're putting in that vape. You don't know what they're putting the substance in cocaine and you're doing this stuff and you're killing yourself and that child's not going to have a mother or father to be there for them. And you're putting yourself in a situation where the longs of long life can be cut short. So I'm going to be on your parents. Because I, I, I'm a parent. I understand. Been there, done that. I made mistakes. But I had to change. Do you get what I'm saying? You're going to have to change. All this stuff, you're trying to use the pastor in the church. No, you need to learn to find your niche in your life. Go to school, get your education, get yourself in a situation where maybe you can live with a mom and daddy or a cousin or somebody and then get yourself together and then Use it as a temporary stepping stone. Don't use it to take advantage of the person and run game on them for the rest of your life. That's crazy. You use it as a stepping stone. You get your degree. Hey, I saved up enough money on my new job. I'm going to move out of my new house. I'm going to move out of my new... That's what we want to see you do. We want to see the progression, not you be the user or the abuser or take advantage of your kids and use them as pawns. We want you to be a prime example of you beating the bullet, finding what your niche is. You going to school, getting your education, getting that job, showing your kids that I'm your mom. If I can do it, you can do it. They need a positive role model. They need men that can get up under the hoods of cars and show them how to work on cars. They need men to teach them landscaping like I teach my godson, Jordan. He gets out there to learn more. He knows stuff. He knows how to fish. He knows how to cook. He knows how to drive a car. And he's only eight years old. This is the kind of stuff that we need to pour into our children to teach them responsibility so when they get at that age, they can do it. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm talking about the laws of long life. Listen to this. It says, do not treat your children in such a way, verse 4, as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline and instruction. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm giving Christian discipline and instruction. I'm giving you examples from my life, parents. That's why I got to be hard on you, man. You don't be lazy. Don't be... Going in your kids, your kids don't work for somebody else, and then all of a sudden, you're going to try to go and steal some money from your child or persuade him to give you money when you should be working, setting an example for your kids and showing them how to make the money. That's what I'm talking about, okay? And I'm not talking about drugs either, all right? Look at this. Look at verse uh, 5. Now, we're going to talk about people on the job. These laws of long life go for you too. Listen to this. Slaves or workers, because you know back then they used the term slaves, but that's not pertaining meaning to you're a slave. You're an employee of a company. Let's just use that as an example. So employees of companies, obey your human bosses or your human masters with reverence, with fear, and trembling. Not sit there scared, but with honor and respect. That's what he's talking about. All right? And do it with a sincere heart. You want to know why you have to do it with a sincere heart? That's why I always tell people, get into a job that you love to do. Don't just work anywhere. Try to get go to school, get your education, and get in a profession that you love. Because if you love what you do, more than likely you're going to be faithful and you're going to stay right there. Do you get what I'm saying? 
So it says, slave, obey your masters with fear and trembling and do it with a sincere heart. See, if you love what you do, you're going to do it with a sincere heart. It's hard to do something when you're really just doing it just to be doing it. But you still should honor. I've done some construction work outside of my job. I do it the best of my ability like I'm doing it unto God, not unto man. And that's the way the Bible says. It says, as though you were serving Christ. Galatians 3.23 says, do it with your whole heart like you're doing it unto God. Okay? You have to. You understand what I'm saying? As though you're serving the Lord. Do this not only when they're watching you. Don't just step their work. See, boss, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my job, boss. Uh-uh. Do it when they take the responsibility and do it like you're doing it unto God, like he's watching you. Do you understand? Don't take no shortcuts. Don't be sneaking, stealing stuff on the job. No. You do it as if your boss is right there, but they're not. You're doing it because God is your boss. He got you that job. He got you that career. He got you that business. Be honest in your dealings. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you will live a long life. When you're not honest with your dealings, the Bible says what in Romans 2.20? The wages of sin is what? Death. And the gift of God is to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages means you keep on doing, keep on doing, keep on doing. And after a while, your life's going to be cut short. Because you've been playing the game too long. And then you wonder why you see people get cut up on the job. Sometimes that could be the situation in the dark. And then you find out later on, they were embezzling money on the job. The whole time. So the reason why they got it, because they were embezzling job, they were embezzling money. Or they were doing stuff underhandedly in secret. You understand what I'm saying? Um, there was a, an attorney one time. I'm not going to say any names. He took somebody's case who was guilty of what they did wrong. And I'm not saying that they were guilty. They may have not did it, but they had somebody else to do the crime. But they knew about it. And I believe that this attorney took the case and this in particular person won the case based on cover-up and lies. And it didn't fare too well for this attorney about some months later after that trial was over, he died. He died. And I truly, firmly believe that it was dishonesty done. That there was no respect that they didn't honor the workplace that they were doing. And they weren't doing it like they were doing it unto God. They went and took matters in their own hand and did it as the devil would do it and did it underhandedly and sneaky. So God allowed their life to be taken up out of here. I'm talking about the laws of long life. Some of you may know who I'm talking about, but I'm not going there. But it was funny how all of a sudden his life was cut off just like that for being dishonest. Because there was something behind the scene that they didn't tell the media, but we're under suspicion or under suspicion that something was going wrong that wasn't, that wasn't right, that wasn't kosher. So it came back on him. Okay? Now. Let's go here. Let's look at verse 7. Do your work as employees or slaves. All right? Do your work cheerfully as though you served the Lord and not merely men. Didn't I just tell you that? Do it like you do it unto the Lord. You need to change your perspective so you can live a long life. Change your character. Change your mind so you can go by the laws of living a long life. All of this is together. Now check this. Do this not only when they are watching you, but because you want to gain their approval but do it with their whole heart and do what God wants 
as employees of Christ. Do your work as employees cheerfully, as though you serve the Lord and not man. Remember, listen to verse 8, that the Lord will reward everyone, whether slave or free, for the good work that he does. So what's the opposite of that? If he's doing bad, eventually your life could be cut short. And I'm not knocking. These are laws. If you obey them, it will fare good for you. You'll live a long life. If you don't, oh well. Listen to this. Remember that the Lord will reward everyone, whether slave or free, for the good work that he does. Listen to this. Masters, bosses, behave in the same way towards your slaves. Stop using threats. Remember that you and your slaves belong to the same master in heaven. You as a boss, God is watching over you too. Bosses. You're going to have to learn not to threaten, not to abuse, not to show partiality, not to do your employees wrong. Because in the matter of this, this can be a life or death situation too. Not just for children disobeying their parents, not just for parents that go against their children and bring up their children the wrong way and be cut off but also for you bosses on jobs and you have businesses. If you're not fair, it's going to come back. What comes around goes around regardless. The wages of sin is death. If you do wrong, if you cheat them out of their wages, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11 through 13 tells you what's going to happen to you. If you cheat them out of their wages, Malachi 3, 5 and so on tells you what can happen to you if you think you're trying to be slick because you're the boss of a company and you want to get over on your employees? I'm talking about the laws of a long life. James chapter 5, verse 4, and so on. James even talks about it. So it's not only in the Torah, it's in the prophets, and it's also in the epistles. Three Different, and it's even more. But I'm giving you the main scriptures. Write it down. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11 through 13. Bosses, if you are treating your employees wrong, you better go by the first five books of the Bible. Employees, if you're treating your workers wrong, in which I know you're doing it today, you better read what the prophets say in Malachi 3, 5, and so on. Bosses, if you think you're trying to get over, I don't know why the Holy Ghost got me going here. And you think you're getting over on your people. And this is why things are not working out right on your job. According to James chapter 5 verse 4 and the epistles with Paul and James, Jesus has had brothers talking here about how you rip off people and how God will deal with you because these people are crying out for their finances that you cheated them out of. It's not going to be well. You cannot show partiality. You cannot show racism. If you steal from them, you're going to be stolen from. You're going to tend to poverty. And it may lead to your death. Losing the company. Losing your family. Losing everything you got. I've seen situations where that has happened. Where there are guys now homeless on the street. Because of this, some didn't make it. I'm telling you, some of these churches and pastors thought he had it going on. He can mess with women on the side of his wife and all of this. The choir director, all these orgies and stuff, crazy stuff going on in the church. Don't lost everything. They're down to nothing. Some are on the streets. Some, they lost their license. Okay, to teach because they may have touched another little girl the wrong way, or another little boy, a woman touched another little boy the wrong way. 
These are things that will come up and believe me, you will lose everything you got and you can't blame nobody but you. You, you can't, uh-uh, don't blame them. It's you. It's your behavior. You know you molested a little boy woman. You know you molested a little girl man. You knew what you did wrong. And you want to get away scot-free with that? No. Nah. No. Nah. It's not going to happen. Now, if you're going back to forgive, that that's, you know, different story. But sometimes that doesn't fare well. Because you were supposed to deal with that a long time ago. And God wanted you to die to the things of the flesh so you can walk in his spirit. Those are habitual, simple habits that was already in you. And God wanted you to stop it. Get it out. Yield before him. Give it to him. We talk about this over and over and over. I'm talking about laws of the long life. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Look at verse 10. As the scripture says, listen to this. Whoever wants to enjoy life and wishes to see good times must keep speaking evil and stop telling lies. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must strive for peace with all of his heart. For the Lord watches over the righteous and listens to their prayers. But he opposes those who do evil. Do I need to read that again? Or do I need to come to a part two of this so I can reiterate? Let me read it one more time. Stay tuned for part two. Of the laws of long life. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10. And a matter of fact, let's, let's, let's start with verse 8. To conclude, you must all have the same attitude and the same feelings. Love one another as brothers. Okay, this is the key. Love one another. This is going to cause you to live a long life. If you don't love one another's brother, you're going to be cut up out of here. You must have the same attitude and the same feeling to love one another as brothers and be kind and humble with one another. Listen to this. Do not pay back evil with evil or cursing with cursing. Isn't this good? Instead, pay back the evil with, bless with a blessing. Because a blessing is what God promised to give you when he called you. You pay back evil with good. Because he promised to give you blessings. Because this is the reason why he called you. And the blessing is not just stuff. The blessings is God's love and his power. So you can have a heart and a compassion after the evil people of God, so you'll pray for them. Sometimes I find myself crying before God on behalf of the evil people that hate me, that hold unforgiveness against me for something that I did in the past, which I already forgiven them for. I cry out to God for them. I cry out to God for the ones that can't stand me and try to give me a hard time. I find myself changing. My heart is changing and I'm starting to pray for my enemies and pray for them to despitefully use me and persecute me. Why? Because it says, because the blessings is what God promised to give you when he called you. As the scripture says, listen to this, whoever wants to enjoy life and live a long life and wishes to see good times. Listen to what it says. You must keep from speaking evil about them. And stop 
over-exaggerating and telling lies. I fell in that trap. And I had to ask God to forgive me. I had to ask God to deal with my heart. Creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Help me from over-exaggerating and lying. Help me, Lord God, from speaking evil about these people. Do you understand? He must, verse 11, turn away from evil and start doing good. He must strive for peace with all of his heart. For the Lord watches over the righteous, but he opposes those who do evil. I'm going to stop right there. Stay tuned for part two of the law, laws of a long life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that this word would penetrate the heart of man, even in the church, even in the body of Christ, and cause them to change. And for the ones that are not saved, that they will come to know you and the power of your resurrection and your love and your fellowship with the saints, that we would learn to forgive and give everything to you totally, Lord God that we would not be caught out here in our sinful nature, that we would walk upright in you. We're speaking about the laws of long life, Lord God. Father God, give him another chance like you gave Hezekiah. Give me another chance like you gave Hezekiah. Help us to walk upright in you. Help me to take this word and hide it in my heart and help them to take this word and hide it in their hearts that we will not sin against you. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and your mercy for it to endure through all generations. And let us have a heart of mercy and truth that we can extend our mercy and love towards people that are not likable, to people that are still walking in sin, for people that are haters, for people that despite for the users and persecutors, help us to learn to love them, even through the trials, to learn the law of love so we can live a long and prosperous life. I ask you to touch right now the masses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Got to take two steps, Marie, and get out of here. Um, just want to let you know, you can listen to our flagship station, www.RestoringUnifiedRadio.com. And you can check us out on Facebook. You see uh, our YouTube pages for all of our teachings and ministry. And we're on 24 hours a day, seven days a week at www.RestoringUnifiedRadio.com with the video, audio portions of the Word of God. Not only from us, but from different men of God. We have our music and everything, Gospel House. We have also the other gospel music from different realms, from multicultural artists throughout the world. We thank you and we love you to life for tuning in. Stay tuned for part two on the love, the laws of long life with Pastor Alan Johnson, Restoring Unified Radio Ministry, and Lisa Johnson. We check you later. We love you to life. <laughs>